On Friday, lunch with the legend, Mike Singletary, the Hall of Fame great linebacker of Baylor, will be uh, in Waco. The Baylor spring game is on Saturday, and Mike Singletary joins me, David Smoke, on 365 Sports. What's it like for you when you come back to Baylor whenever you do? Well, it's always um, <laughs> first I'm amazed by the change. Um, I mean, there's so many new buildings, and it's so beautiful. And uh, at the same time, I, I always go back by um, the dorm uh, that I that used to be the dorm I stayed in. And um, it's just a lot of fond memories. And every time I get a chance to go back, I, I always drive around to a couple of places that um, just remind me of, you know, the first place I went when I got there, the, where I met my wife, um, all those kinds of things. Um, it was, um, it's always a great feeling. Mike, obviously, you, there'll be Q&A questions. John Morris involved as he does so many events for Baylor, the voice of uh, Baylor Athletics. Do you have anything in particular that you like to discuss, a, a message that you might have this week? You know, I, I really don't. I'm, I'm going to let him kind of drive the, the message uh, because, you know, there's so many directions that, that mm -hmm. you could go in um, at, uh, at Baylor. Uh, so many memories, so many things that um, have transpired through the years. So uh, it's, anything's game. How much do you uh, appreciate or how impressed are you that despite constant like upheaval or coaching changes from Art Bryles and how that ended, Jim Grobe interim for a year, Matt Rule comes in and builds it back up, then he's gone, then Dave Aranda deals with COVID and he builds him back up. All the last year was a disappointing year. How have they been able to always seem to get up off the canvas? Well, I, I think um, you know they've done a they've done a good job in their their coaching searches and and. Um, really uh, sought out people that really uh, reflect what they're trying to find. And I think that's the difference. How much would it have meant to you, Mike, if that opportunity had ever been able to be something you had to, to coach your alma mater? You know, I, I, I put it this way, you know, I've been asked that question several times. And for me, it always comes down to, I, I believe in life that if, no, no matter what I think about it, um, if it were if it were supposed to be, uh, because of the God that we serve, I believe it would have been. Mm -hmm. And um, so, for me, um, since it didn't happen, you know, you move on and you you continue to look at where where God is putting you, and and you continue to grow and. So I, I look at it and, and I think I would like to think, wow, that would have really been special. It would have, maybe it wouldn't have been. Um, maybe it would have been a bad ma uh, a match. I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, the, I just look at the guys that have been there. They've done a good job. And, um, you know, I, I think that's, um, that's pretty much the way I look at it. Things have changed. The way the game is played, the way the game's officiated, the rules. You now have name, image, and likeness. You have the transfer portal. It has changed, Mike, dramatically from the days when you played and were an All-American. Do you like college football today? You know, I, yeah, I like college football. Uh, do I like, you know, the portal? Do I like the changes? Do I like I, – I just think that um, it has shifted. Uh, it has – college football has shifted from – kind of the, the, the coaches and the universities had the edge. And I think today, um, you know, the players have the edge. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I, I think because of that, um, some of it's good. Um, but I think, you know, some of it's bad. It's, it's, uh, there are good coaches out there that really want to coach hard and really want to build young men up that, don't have fathers and and um, but but really want to invest in those players and it's difficult to do that because it's hard to learn it's hard for a player to learn without being tested and so if I'm a young man and you test me and I, I don't have a dad and I, I don't really know what that means 
Well, I, it's going to be misconstrued. I think I would have left Baylor after my second week. Um, I mean, Coach Nelson lit into me like I don't know what. I'm like, this guy is racist. He doesn't like me. He hates me. I can't wait to get out of here. Mm-hmm. But I, but I couldn't. And that was the best thing for me. It was, if it had not been for Corky Nelson, I, I, you know, you wouldn't be talking to me. Um, I just think that that's the unfortunate part about today's game is there's so many kids that they they haven't learned, they haven't lived enough to understand the difference between um, someone chastising you and trying to help you become a man and someone that just does not like you picking on you. There's a big difference. So with that, the way you said that and the player you were and how you were brought up, could you coach today? Well, I mean, like I said, if if, if that's something that would have been yeah. um, in the cards, then you find a way to do it. Maybe I don't coach long, but, <laughs> but you find a way. You find a way to do it, and, and you have to find those players. You know, I got to go out and I got to find some guys that, you know, work on a farm or, or dad's in construction. They're, they're used to hard work. They're, they're, you know, maybe they're not the, the five-star players, but, you know, if, if – uh, if they're not afraid of work, maybe they become five-star players. So, but toughness is is a key component of of a great team. And if you can build that in in the culture of a team, you got a chance. Mike, uh, what would have happened? Do you ever? I don't. This is hypothetical, but I know your father wasn't real thrilled with like I think sports growing up, and eventually, and you can clarify that or uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but eventually said okay. You can go play football. You ever think back on if that that would not have been available? Would someone still have found Mike Singletary, the football player? Well, you know, uh, actually, it was it was my mom. You know, my dad, my dad kind of played into it as well. But you know, when my dad left my mom, then basically it was her decision. He kind of put his blessings on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Um, you know, it was my mom that, that uh, I had to convince. And so my dad, being a Pentecostal pastor, you know, in, in the Pentecostal religion, there is no sports. That, that's an evil thing. So um, I think looking back on it, you know, if thankfully I had the chance to go out and play and, and prove myself and, and uh, go through all of the trial and error that, that you go through in order to, to be the kind of player you need to be. But if you're not on the field, uh, chances are no one's going to see you. You know, we had a guy today on who represents a company that is uh, that has helmets, the, should hel- uh, the shut helmet, Vice's helmet, which is one that's kind of new. And they developed a new, a new helmet for quarterbacks for when their head's not hit by another player, but when it hits the ground the collision of the ground, like Tua dealt with at Miami last year and others have as well. It made me think when I was talking to him, how many helmets, do you know how many helmets you ever cracked in your football career? Well, I know at least 10 at Baylor. (laughs) And then probably, you know, four or five in high school and uh, maybe six or seven in the pros. So 20 or so, yeah, and, and you Something played, like and you when you hit somebody, there was you were there for a, a reason. Um, do you ever stop for a second and, and, and thank, the, thank God because you seem to have been able to play the game that was so physical, so violent, all of that, and some people have struggled, health, their head, whatever, that you seem to, to have everything you should have, all your faculties? Well, you know, I I, uh, I credit everything to the you know the Lord, the, the God that we serve. Uh, I am very very thankful that um, you know He always watched over me. Uh, but the other thing is, I really practice tackling correctly, and uh, you know, not putting my head down making myself vulnerable, making sure that I hit with my face, making sure that my eyes were wide open. I could see what I was hitting, which gives your brain a chance to respond and, and uh, brace itself. Um, 
but, you know, being able to put my neck in my shoulders and all of those little things that, you know, you got to do over and over again and, and help them be, be, become a habit so that when you're tackling on the field and, and you're going 100 miles an hour full speed and you crash, well, your body is always in position to make sure you're prepared to absorb that blow um, um, or the force that comes from that blow. You're delivering the blow. But it, it's so uh, amazing when you talk to athletes about this is how you hit. You just don't go out there and just run into somebody mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. train wreck. There is a technique involved in tackling. And if you follow that technique, you have a really good chance uh, of not getting hurt or hurting your person. When you are a player and you don't just walk into a locker room, whether you're a freshman coming into Baylor or a rookie in the NFL, but people gravitate to those who are leaders who do it the right way. How did you know when teammates were all in? How did you, you know, know who someone was real um, and, and and not just talk? You know, I, I, I don't, I really don't think I thought about it a lot. You, you know, you just, yeah. you just make sure that you're real. You just make sure that I, I think that, leadership and all of those things are always caught. Uh, Coaching to me is a lot like parenting. Uh, When kids see that your heart is in it, you're you're not just out there yelling at people, bossing people around, trying to hurt people. You, You are talking to people from your experience. You're talking to people to try and help them get better. And, and um, players know the difference. And, and I think that uh, as long as people, people are always looking at you, whether you think they are or not. And I, I was always quiet. I always conducted myself in a way that um, I was always respectful and um, tried to do the right thing. And if I said something, it needed to be said. If, if um, Otherwise, I, I was pretty quiet. And I think people gravitate towards someone who is authentic, someone who is respectful of themselves first, then others, and uh, someone who who's doing more than they're talking um, and, and allowing their actions to speak for them. I think those are the people that people gravitate towards. You were a part of that TV series, Beyond the Edge. In fact, I think that might have been the last time we had you on the show, and you told us stories about trying to go to the bathroom, Ray Lewis at night and all this. Is, is that one of the more petrifying, scariest? Did I mean, how much did that test you? As someone who is Mike Singletary, the Pro Football Hall of Fame linebacker with the eyes and the fear, fearless type of play, how much did that test you? Well, let, let me put it this way. When you got to go to the bathroom at, at, at 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and, and I don't care how big my eyes got, and you had things looking at you with red eyes, and that you don't know what they are, and they're making noises, it, it's pretty it, – it will test everything that you have. How bad do you want to go to the bathroom? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it, was, um, it was quite interesting. But the great thing about it is – uh, I was thankful that I tested myself the way I would have never, ever been able to test myself in civilization. Being out there really allowed me to um, realize how much I really trusted God and uh, with my life and, and with, um, you know, everything in me to, to get back home. So uh, very thankful for that experience. Mike, one more thing. Uh, Two more questions. The 85 Bears, still as dominant as anybody that's ever won the Super Bowl. That team, the characters, the personalities, the coaches, the players, the Hall of Famers. How often do you still get a chance to rekindle that with any of those former players? Oh, at least two or three times a year, Uh, if not more. I mean, uh, you know, I see Hampton and – you know, Hampton and I always talk about uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks and the Bay of the Bears. And, and of course, uh, Steve McMichael, bless his heart, he's, he's kind of ailing right now. But uh, Steve and I always uh, used to talk about that. Now it's just uh, prayers for him. 
um, and so many other players, you know, that, um, you know, the old Southwest conference is, is, was a heck of a conference. I hate to get rid of it, but, um, there are just a lot of stories that, uh, when I see guys, old teammates, uh, love sit down, sitting down and, and talking about those times. So there are about four or five guys that, that we, uh, we always have a lot to talk about. Was there ever a more perfect quarterback for that team than Jim McMahon? There is no other quarterback that could have played for Coach Dicker. Um, Jim McMahon and Coach Dicker were a match made in heaven. Um, Coach Dicker, I mean, he tried to intimidate Jim, and it, it just didn't, it didn't happen. And uh, Jim would just look at him and go, you know, hey, go sit down. I, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this, and this is what we're doing. The players loved it. I mean, everybody loved it because they couldn't do it. Jim was the only one that could get away with it. Uh, anybody else would have been choked. So, uh, but Jim was, uh, he was one of the, the, the players that I really appreciated who he was. Yes, he was crazy, but, man, he was, uh, he did a lot for our offense, really did. How are the children? Children are doing great. Fantastic. Thanks for asking. I know you love that, but part of your life. Mike Singletary, Friday, 1130 until 1 at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Lunch with a legend, and not many could ever be a part of that same sentence in Baylor history or Bears history than Mike Singletary. Mike, it's great to have you. Good luck with the event. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you, sir. God bless. Mike Singletary, 365 Sports. Richard Carr's 24.